Hello, and welcome to the Get Your Clocks in Sync clock synchronization webinar focused on high, clocking high-speed data converters. My name is Jason Clark. I'm the end equipment lead for the signal measurement and source generation section of TI's test and measurement sector. Today we'll talk about some interesting new high-speed clocking devices and a reference design that's focused on these devices. Some of the things we'll talk about are applications for these high-speed clocks and the high-speed data converters that go along with them, the benefits of JESD204B, which is a new high-speed serial interface link to connect high-speed data converters and high-speed FPGAs. We'll talk about the, an overview of our current reference design. We'll look at the reference design results, and then we'll talk about some future investigations that we can do with this reference design. As many of you know, the industry is moving to higher and higher frequencies, moving towards what we call the millimeter wave band of frequencies. And these trends can be seen in a number of different applications, including test and measurement, 5G wireless communications, and with 5G, we also see the advent of more communications with autonomous cars. And in the military and defense sectors, we see the frequencies pushing up for things such as radar, and electronic warfare. These trends, as you can see below, are quickly moving the industry beyond 6 gigahertz of carrier frequency. And as we move to higher and higher frequencies, we're also pushing the instantaneous bandwidth higher because we want to increase the data rates for these systems. So the instantaneous bandwidths are moving beyond 1 gigahertz. The high performance clocking solutions will present today are, are there because you need these high performance clocks in order to maintain the high system level performance of your end applications. So now we'll talk about JESD 204B benefits. Here you can see six benefits and we'll dive into three a little bit more in detail. So the first benefit of JESD 204B is really the reduced and simplified PCB area. On the right hand side of this slide you can see uh, an LVDS data converter layout on a board. This LVDS data converter requires 32 different differential pairs to be routed on the board, and each of these differential pairs have to be of matched length. This requires up to four layers just to route the LVDS traces. In contrast, you can see the JESD 204B routing below for that same class of data converter. Here, we only need eight lanes of differential pairs to be routed on the board. And the benefit of JESD is that these pairs don't have to be length matched. That's taken care of in the JESD protocol. So all of these pairs can be run on the same layer of the board. And you can see that here uh, on the right hand, bottom right hand side. Another benefit of JESD 204B is that it's much more scalable to higher frequencies. In previous generations of LVDS data converters, a clock had to be run along with the data lines. That meant the clock had to be matched for the setup and hold times of those data lines. Now, with JESD 204B, the clock is actually embedded in the data, and that is recovered through a clock data recovery circuit in the protocol. The last uh, benefit I'll talk about today is the simplified interface timing. As you can see on the top right, and I mentioned before, the clock always has to be aligned with the data. And those data lines could be skewed by some amount with respect to each other. Therefore, the clock positioning is very critical in the LVDS data converters. However, in the JESD 204B data converters, the clock is actually embedded so the timing is much less critical than it is in LVDS converters. Now we will talk about a new reference design called the TIDA0121. In this reference design, we created a new clocking board to clock multiple JESD 204B data converters. This design supports device clocks all the way up to 15 gigahertz and also includes the new SysRef signal, which is required to synchronize multiple JESD 204B data converters together. This design is very useful for applications including digital oscilloscopes, wireless communication testers, software-defined radio, and phased array radars. We wanted to create 
a scalable clocking solution which can be used for multiple different data converters and DAG combinations. On the next slide, I will talk about more details about the design. Here is a picture of the full evaluation system. On the left, you can see uh, a picture of the, of the boards connected together with the block diagram on the right. What you can see here is first the clocking board. The clock board is in the middle. This was a new board that was developed that was the, the basis of the reference design, which includes the LMK04828 and the LMX2594s. In addition, we have two ADC eval boards. These eval boards include the ADC 12DJ3200 12-bit 3.2 gigasample per second ADC. We also have the JESD 204B capture card. This capture card includes a high-speed FPGA that takes the signals from the ADC and processes them. And last but not least is the FMC Plus adapter board. This adapter board allows us to connect all three of these boards together. Connect the clocks to the data converter and the data converter to the FPGA capture card. Here we can see an expanded view of the clocking board we created for this design. In the center, you can see the LMK04828 clock distribution device and jitter cleaner. This device accepts a reference clock from the system, buffers that, and sends that out to two LMX2594 synthesizers. Those two LMX2594 synthesizers then generate the device clock at up to 15 gigahertz for the data converter and the new sysref signal needed for JESD 204B synchronization. Since we have two LMX2594 devices on the board, we can clock up to two data converters with this board. The LMK04828 also provides the reference clocks and device clocks for the FPGA on the data capture card. In addition, we also have the power supply needed for all of the devices on this board. As I mentioned before, another critical component of this design is the FMC Plus to FMC adapter board. This board allows us to route signals from the clocking board into the FPGA, as you can see here, and it also connects the JESD 204B data lanes from the data converter to the FPGA capture card. As I mentioned before, the power tree is also included on the clocking board. We included a capability to accept a 5 volt input and then provide the power to all of the devices uh, with three different options, either by using the DC to DC converter to provide the 3.3 volts to all the devices, or by only using the LDOs on the board, which include very high performance, low noise, RF capable LDOs or by using combination of the two with the DC to DC converter feeding the LDOs. Here you can see the target specifications that we wanted to meet with this design. We really wanted to measure three different aspects of the design. The first was the device clock phase noise. We wanted to measure this at three different frequencies, 3.5 gigahertz, 9 gigahertz, and 15 gigahertz. And look at that at different offset frequencies as well. The next thing we wanted to measure is the channel to channel time skew. Here we wanted to achieve less than 50 picoseconds of time skew between the different channels. Again, we measured this at a number of different ADC input signal frequencies. Last but not least, we wanted to measure the entire system performance. And here we're going to measure the SNR of the full data converter signal chain. We wanted to look at the SNR at a number of different input signal frequencies as well. So first we'll look at the measured performance that we achieved for the phase noise of the, of the clocking solution on the boards. Here you can see we measured the outputs at three different frequencies, 3.5 gigahertz, 9 gigahertz, and 15 gigahertz. We've included what we expected, our expected phase noise results here in the table, and also the measured phase noise results. You can see we achieved very close correlation with the, with the expected results with our, with our evaluation board. On the bottom, you can see the phase noise plots at three different frequencies.
The next thing we wanted to look at was the channel to channel skew between the clocks. Here we were looking to achieve less than 50 picoseconds of skew between the clocks. On the top of this graph you can see the device clock switching at a very high frequency and on the bottom you can see the SysRef, this new uh, synchronization signal for the JESD 204B lanes running at a much lower frequency. And we were able to achieve much better than our expected results. Here you can see actually the actual results were 6.7 picoseconds for the device clock and approximately 1.3 picoseconds for the SysRef. And in all cases, we were able to achieve less than 10 picoseconds of skew between the LMX 2594 outputs. This is very good performance, which allows for minimal synchronization errors between the two data converters. Lastly, we measured the full signal chain performance of the ADC system. Here you can see we measured this performance at three different input frequencies, 997 MHz, 2483 MHz, and 5250 MHz. For your reference, we provided the SNR numbers from the ADC datasheet and from the ADC 12DJ3200 EVM. We were able to achieve comparable performance to the EVM with our external clocking board, and we believe in future reference designs we can improve this even further. On the bottom of the page, you can see the spectrum at the three different frequencies. Here, we use TI's HSDC Pro capture software to capture these results. This software allows us to measure different parameters of the ADC system, including SNR and SFDR. This software is available for free for download on TI's website. With the current design completed, we wanted to look at areas for future investigations based on the same hardware. Here you can see a list of seven different designs that we, we plan to investigate in the future. The first is a multi-channel design where the customer provides an external clock that's greater than 3.2 gigahertz as the device clock. This clock would then be divided down and then used to generate the reference clock for the system. The second design would be a design where we try to clock greater than two data converters. The current design with its two LMX 2594s supports up to two data converters. Here we would like to take that design and make it more scalable and connect multiple boards together. The third design is looking at clocking both high-speed RF ADCs and DACs together. The current design clocked two high-speed ADCs and this design will be used in more of a transceiver mode where we have both ADCs and DACs. The fourth design will support synchronization of the digital functions on the chips. Most new high-speed ADCs and DACs include lots of digital functions, such as high-speed NCOs, digital down converters, and digital up converters. The fifth design will look at the temperature effects on deterministic latency, skew, and SNR performance. The sixth design will take in a sub 3.2 gigahertz external clock to use as a device clock. In this case, the LMX 2594 can be bypassed and we can use the LMK 04828 in distribution mode to also generate the SysRef clock. The final design, number seven shown here, will be a multi-channel solution where the device clock is greater than 3.2 gigahertz in order to support future higher speed ADCs. In this case, the LMX 2594 will be used as the device clock and generate the SysRef clock. As I mentioned, one of the areas we're going to look at is clocking even more data converters in parallel. For this, we'll use a tree topology to clock these data converters, where we'll have a master LMK 04828 device that provides reference clocks to the slave LMK 04828 devices on the TIDA board that we showed before. Here, we would be able to clock a maximum of seven boards because there are up to seven outputs on the LMK 04828. And this could be continued in, again in a tree configuration to clock even more data converters. Next, I'll spend a little bit of time just to go over the devices that are included in this reference design. The first is the LMK 04828. This is a JESD compliant clock jitter cleaner. 
This device is very high performance, very low jitter, only 88 femtoseconds of RMS jitter at 245 megahertz. It includes a dual PLL architecture for the jitter cleaning, and it supports frequencies all the way up to 3 gigahertz of performance. Next is the LMX2594. This is TI's newest 15 gigahertz wideband PLL with integrated VCO. It offers very good performance in terms of phase noise and 1 over F noise. Here you can see the phase noise is measured at 110 dBc per hertz with 100 kilohertz offset at a 15 gigahertz carrier frequency. Its 1 over F noise is very low at 129 dBc per hertz as well. This is an excellent device for use in, in these new high-speed JSD converters because this device also includes the capability to generate the SysRef signal needed for JSD 204B. In addition, this device also includes some unique features. One to talk about is the frequency ramping feature. This can be useful in things like radar where you need to generate a high-speed chirp. As I mentioned, this device includes the SysRef output for JESD 204B. Here you can see the two parallel outputs on the device. The RFOA uh, section of the device is used to, to provide the device clock to the high-speed data converter. And the RFOB is used to provide the SysRef for the high-speed data converter and FPGA. In addition, those two clocks can be adjusted with very fine resolution. Here you can see the minimum resolution of the signals at approximately 9 picoseconds. Another device that we used on this design was the ADC-12DJ3200. This is a dual channel 12-bit 3.2 gigasample per second data converter or it can also be configured as a single channel 6.4 gigasample per second data converter. This device includes the JESD 204B interface and has a fairly low power at 3.6 watts total for in the one channel mode. One of the unique features of this device is the input frequency. This device offers up to 8 gigahertz of input bandwidth. This allows for direct RF sampling at very high frequencies all the way up to 8 gigahertz. The last portion of the device is the TSW14J56. This device is a data capture card that capture signals from the JESD 204B interface. It includes 8 gigabits of DDR3 memory to support samples of up to 512 mega samples of capture at 16 bits. There are 10 lanes that are supported, which allows it to support many of our high-speed ADCs and DACs. As I conclude the presentation, I wanted to give you some additional resources for your reference. Here's a, on the top is a link to the, the actual reference design with the design guide, schematics, Gerbers, and BOM for both the clocking board and the FPGA adapter board. We also have recorded some hardware and software setup videos that you can view. I have also included the links to the product folders for the LMK04828, LMX 2594, TSW14J56, and the HSDC Pro data capture software. That wraps up what I wanted to share with you today. We hope you found this information useful. Please feel free to check out these related resources on our training portal for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to post in our T TI EDE community, which our TI teams monitor around the clock. Visit EDE on TI.com to post a question or search any of our TI technical forums. Have a great rest of your day.